Saute them in the stove for breakfast. They're what? Yeah, your potatoes. Yeah. yeah. These I'm just going to keep nice and simple. I my cooking philosophy really is to try and keep things simple. I don't think you need uh, you know 40 different ingredients in a dish to make it taste good. You just buy a nice piece of swordfish and cook it properly with a couple nice ingredients and you don't need to add uh, you know as I said 40 different crazy ingredients that you see at the newest restaurant in town. So you're going to saute those? Yep, we're going to um, pan nice and warm. I'm going to start sauteing them with just uh, some olive oil, salt and pepper, a little bit of butter, some creamy mouthfeel. Mm. Everything's better with a little bit of butter. I, I hate to break the news to you, I know. I, I know. I know we're all dieting. <laughs> but you can, you, can, you can certainly do it with just I, olive oil if you want to. I cannot believe it's that butter. I'm just going to shred, uh, pardon me, just shred some red cabbage. Just going to take the brownish outer layers off. Just got a couple little brown spots we're going to take care of. In half, out with the core. Half again. I'm going to use this like a little, a little bed to serve the, to serve the swordfish on. Yep. This is going to be incorporated all into the sauce that we're making. It's going to be kind of a sauce slash accompaniment. All right, so we're all set to start cooking. The last thing I'm going to do, you notice I did all my vegetables on this cutting board first, and then I'll do my raw meat last. That way we don't have to go back and forth, changing cutting boards, washing cutting boards, and so on. All right, so I'm gonna wipe this down. We've got three for dinner tonight, is that correct, Ann? Yes. Jane, you're having swordfish tonight? Okay, good. Are you having swordfish, Jane? Yes. <laughs> so we're gonna try, we're gonna make, uh, it, it's easier to portion it now than trying to portion it later when it's all cooked up. So years of experience, we're going to try and go for three separate pieces. Okay, so we've got three nice pieces of swordfish for these guys tonight. All right, we're going to break for a minute, let our pans warm up, because I taught you that saute means to jump, so that means your food should jump when it hits that saute pan. So we're going to let those warm up and then we'll get cooking. Okay, great. We've got uh, two nice hot pans going. And I like to use a little combination of olive oil and butter. We can tell that that's obviously butter has a much lower burn point than olive oil. So we know that everything's nice and warm for us. We're going to get a potato started first. I'm going to turn this up just a little bit. There we go. Go. Probably going to do this in a couple different batches. Sometimes when you crowd a pan, you don't get the nice brown that you're looking for. Steams is more than exactly. So we're going to uh, we're going to go with a couple a couple batches in that. Okay, so we've got this pan nice and hot. And this is going to be we're going to start our swordfish in here first. Now what I'm going to do with the swordfish, I'm just going to dust it with uh, just a touch of flour just to keep it from sticking and to give us a nice little coating. As I've said before, whenever you're going into a hot saute pan, 
start towards you and work away from you so that when it splatters or if you drop it, it doesn't splatter right back on you. So we'll set that in there. Tap off the excess flour. Now what is the purpose again of the flour? It just, it, it tends to keep things from sticking. It, it makes kind of a little, a little tiny, almost imperceptible crust uh -huh. to sear in the juices. Okay, so we've got those going. I'm just gonna rinse off my hands really quickly. Bob can get a, a medium, medium rare to medium, medium, cooked all the way through with your swordfish. Cooked all the way through. Cooked all the way through, okay. And as I've said in the past, always remember that whatever you're cooking on the stove top is gonna continue cooking after you take it off. So you have to pay attention to that. You're just gonna keep moving those babies around. And as I've mentioned in the past too, let your pans do the work. Don't, don't flip, don't turn, don't, just leave things alone until they're ready. A lot of times people move stuff around in the pan. Oh, now Anne was supposed to take the battery out of the smoke alarm. She obviously did not. <laughs> After I prayed, what was the last? We went, we went somewhere where we, where we, we kept setting it off all the time. I remember. So the swordfish doesn't have to cook that long. Swordfish does not have to cook that long. I would say probably four minutes on either side. Mm -hmm. Plus we're, you know, we're not eating right away, so. But it's not bad meats and so on. It's good to let them rest, especially beef. Let let beef rest before you start cutting into it. So you can see on the edges here. I don't know if you can yeah, see. Okay. You can see the edge down there where it's starting to brown up nicely right there. Now it's time for flipping. Ooh, a nice caramelization. Yeah, that's that little that's that little bit of flour that's keeping it from sticking and creating a little little crust on there and you'll see there is a little the butter and the oil does burn a little bit in the bottom but that'll be fine we're going to take these out let them rest uh, pour off a little bit of that butter I try and use the pan trying to keep those natural juices in there as much as possible with like chicken whatever you're working with because all those little brown bits in the bottom of the pan they're all flavor they're all little bits of what you're cooking so you want to you want to incorporate those into your into your into your meal so you get better flavor profile a little bit of depth. Is that what the vermouth is for? The vermouth is I'm going to use to what they call deglaze the pan. These since they're they're cut small enough, these should cook through as we as we just saute them on the top. If they don't cook through all the way on top here, we'll pop them in the oven for five minutes or so until they start to tenderize. That was good. Yep. Now I've told you about touching, touching beef, touching whatever it happens to be. Yeah, you know the, the routine. Make a little fist like that. Softest part is rare. As you're getting closer to your wrist, you're talking well done. Most restaurant chefs, you'll see touching their meat as opposed to um, as opposed to checking it with a thermometer or cutting it open really the worst thing you can do is cut it open because it's just going to let all the juices and the flavors come right out of it still a little soft in the middle I, want, I don't want this to brown too much so I'm just going to bring the bring the flame down a little bit Slow cook. Check the other side. Yeah, it's looking good. So we'll just let that go. About halfway through the cooking process on these potatoes, we'll start. We'll do some salt and pepper.
always under season, you can always add more. But there's very few ways to get stuff out. The only trick I've ever learned in restaurant business for, for getting salt out of things, and it only works for soups and sauces and so on, 